In this video, we'll use primitives as a starting point for our basic shapes, then modify the primitive object components to achieve the desired result. This workflow is extremely common for 3D modelers, and even basic cubes are very often used as the starting point for complex or organic models. To create the coin return buttons, we'll begin with the primitive cube that's moved into the correct position, orientation, and scale to match our concept art. The front face of the coin return button tapers in a bit, so we'll switch to component mode by right-clicking over the geometry and selecting vertex in order to select and manipulate the object's vertices. I'll draw a selection box around the two front top vertices by left mouse dragging, activate the move tool by pressing W, and shift the vertices down a bit. Then I'll move the two front bottom vertices up and forward slightly. I'll need to add a plastic button within this angled piece, so the next step is to add more edges to the front face of this cube. To do this, I'm going to use the Extrude tool, which lets us select one or more faces and pull them away from the model, creating new faces along the border edges. I'll right-click over the existing geometry and switch to Face Component mode by clicking on the Face option. Then, I'll activate the Extrude tool by going to Edit Mesh in the main menu and selecting Extrude. When this tool is activated, a custom extrusion widget appears which allows us to move, rotate, and scale the newly extruded face. We can also adjust how many edge divisions will be inserted along the new geometry by selecting the divisions attribute and middle mouse dragging horizontally. For this button, I'm going to scale the new face inward rather than translating it. This will create a framing around the plastic button. Once the new face has been scaled and positioned, I'll activate the extrude tool again. I can go back to the Edit Mesh menu and choose Extrude, or just hit the G key, which can often be used to repeat the last action in Maya. For this next extrusion, I'll pull the new face straight back into the casing to create an indentation. I'll hit G once again to create yet another extrusion, this time shrinking the geometry inward and off to the side a bit to create some space between the frame and the plastic button, and to create a slot where a coin could be inserted off to one side. Finally, I'll hit G to extrude one last time and pull the plastic button forward so that it sits flush with the original face. As a last step for this piece, I'll add a slight bevel to the outer edges as well as the side of the plastic button where a coin would be inserted. I'll right-click over the object to switch to component mode, choose the edge option, then select the edges I need to bevel by left mouse clicking while holding down the shift key. Once again, I'll go to edit mesh, bevel, then modify the size of the bevels by adjusting the fraction attribute. The coin return button is now complete. We'll create just one more smaller component, the player button, before moving on to the larger shapes. The button consists of just two pieces, a cylinder and a circular rim. The rim is easy. We'll just create another primitive torus, move it into position, adjust its scale and rotation, then edit the construction history to achieve the correct size and level of detail. I'll reduce the subdivision axis attribute down to 12 and the subdivision height attribute down to 7. I'll also adjust the section radius to match the reference image. The button itself will begin as a cylinder. I'll click on the cylinder shelf button to create the primitive and again adjust the position, rotation, and scale to match the reference image. Like the torus rim, I'll reduce the subdivision axis attribute to 12. I'll want to add a smooth indentation to the top of the button. This detail isn't visible here in our front view reference image, but I know that it's an important part of the button shape for a vintage arcade game. In order to create this soft indentation, I'll add a few additional subdivisions to the cylinder caps. Four will probably be enough. To sculpt this indentation, I'm going to make use of my soft select option. Soft selection allows us to expand the influence of a component selection to gradually affect a larger region of a mesh. This tool can be very handy for creating organic edits to an object because it allows us to easily adjust large regions of a mesh by interacting with a small selection of components. 
First, I'll select the vertex that lies in the center of the top cap of the cylinder button, again by right-clicking and choosing Vertex. I'll activate the Move tool by pressing W, then engage Soft Selection by pressing B on the keyboard. You'll see that the nearby edges and vertices now have a yellow-orange color, which indicates that they will also be influenced when I move the selected vertex. I can adjust the falloff of the Soft Selection by holding down the B key and middle mouse dragging left or right. I'll grow the selection to include all but the outer edge of the cap, then grab the green arrow and move it down to create the indentation. As mentioned earlier, this is one situation where having the Move tool set to Object Mode rather than World Mode can make for a more accurate edit. Again, the Move tool can be changed by holding down the W key and left mouse dragging to select Object rather than World. In Object Mode, the vertices can easily be moved relative to the object's orientation rather than the scene or world orientation. With the indentation added, soft selection can be turned off by tapping on the B key again. As a last step, we'll add a bevel to the outer edge of the button cap. We'll want the bevel to affect the entire set of continuous edges on the button cap. By activating Edge Component Mode and double-clicking on one of the edges rather than clicking just once, all continuous edges or the entire edge loop will be selected. We'll return to the Edit Mesh menu, choose Bevel, adjust the fraction attribute again, and the button is now complete. In the next video, we'll look at methods for duplicating the buttons and coin return elements and precisely aligning geometry.